Hey, what's up, everyone? Team what's Adventurous. Up? And uh, if you don't know who Casual Geographic is, it's oh. this guy right here. And he's yeah. funny as fuck. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna drink in some of his hilarity for seven minutes. Yes. And what's Deep wrong with you if you don't know who he is? Me. The what? I said, what's wrong with you if you don't know who he is? Luna moth. It doesn't. Nature decided a it progressively oh. gets more and more disturbing. The Luna moth. It doesn't. Nature decided they didn't need a mouth, so they live for a week and starve to death. Tarantulas use their venom to put their prey on a stretcher, but the horror movie begins when they start eating. They'll vomit digestive enzymes all over the dead body to liquefy the corpse and then suck up the soup carcass from straw-like mouths, basically digesting the food before it gets in their body. Yep. Vol- Which is how most spiders eat, by the way. Uh-huh. It's some, some variant of that. Yeah. There's are scavengers that feed on the deceased, but since they have weak claws and even weaker beaks, they begin every meal by sticking their head in a dead animal's rotting anus and pulling the intestines out. That's actually uh-huh. why they're bald, because when you toss a dead warthog salad for a living, you're better off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because when you toss dead warthog salad for a living, <laughs> and you see what I mean, folks? We're 30 seconds in, and he delivers that fucking golden nugget of hilarity. <laughs> Off with no feathers on your head because they're just going to get dirty. The starfish will eject its stomach all over its prey, digest it from the outside until it's reduced to a soupy chowder, only to suck it all up again. Fun fact, actually, really sad fact, starfish eat sponges, and yes, I saw the Patrick cartoon, and no, I still haven't forgiven the internet for it. (laughs) Hey, Patrick, let's go. Let's go catch some jellyfish. Patrick, do you know how sea stars feed SpongeBob? (laughs) Our stomachs extend out of our bodies, penetrating our brain, injecting them with enzymes so that they may be digested externally. I'm sorry, SpongeBob. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> For the women out there, have you ever tried to reject a guy and he just wouldn't take the hint? Well, here are some options you didn't know you had. If you're a female capybara, you would find the nearest body of water and submerge yourself until the guy takes the hint and leaves you alone. If you happen to be a female moorland dragonfly, you would fake your own death to destroy the morale of whatever guy pursuing you. Female dragonflies have been observed crash diving and laying motionless until their suitor flew off, only moving once the coast was clear. As a female, <laughs> male, you would run off females and jump the offending male party, even though he can be up to three times bigger than you. If he survives his brutal lesson in gender equality, he is banished from the group. And if you're a redback spider, you are. On, if you survive, you eat motionless until their suitor flew off. Only moving once the coast was clear. As a female mandrill, you would round up a few equally pissed off females and jump the offending male party, even though he can be up to three times bigger than you. If he survives his brutal lesson in gender equality, he is banished from the group. And if you're a redback spider, you already know how this movie ends. If a guy approaches you and you're not feeling it, you would just eat him. No beating around the bush, no letting him down easy, just straight up take his life. Now, to be fair, even if you do let him hit, there's about a 60% chance you would cannibalize him anyway. Basically, you would snatch his soul twice. (laughs) <laughs> basically you would snatch his soul it was an animal friendship you didn't know you needed in life also obligatory spider warning the tarantula is a powerful predator that can take out birds rodents and even venomous snakes but he has a best friend and pets. a roommate and it's actually this tiny dotted humming frog normally this little frog would be two seconds away from croaking in a coffin but they have a deal the frog eats the ants and insects that would eat the tarantula's eggs, and in return, they get a place to stay outside of the drying sun, and they get probably the best bodyguard you can get in the jungle. Mm-hmm. Tarantula is capable of accidentally eating their frog friends, so they use chemicals to tell which ones are on their side. Young spiders will grab these frogs, examine them with their mouth parts, and when they realize it's their friend, they'll release them unharmed. But if the tarantula ever decides to do them dirty, the frog's skin is covered in disgusting tasting toxins. But the relationship works so well that it never needs to get to that point. As long as the frog protects the tarantula's future children, the spider will protect the frog from threats like snakes. Even after the eggs hatch, the tarantula will continue to protect its green babysitter. If you didn't think spiders could be wholesome, there you go. Yep. Yeah. There are some facts about the ocean you may or may not believe. You're just going to have to trust me. What early sailors thought were mermaids actually turned out to be a group of manatees that they described as not as beautiful as painted. But if you look at their skeleton, you, <laughs> you know manatees have hands? I did. Whales and dolphins sleep <laughs> by did. turning off half their brain at a time, and they also sleep like this. And since whales have to remind themselves to breathe, they hold their breath for their entire nap. The Marianas Trench is so deep that if you put Mount Everest at the bottom, the top of the mountain would still be a mile away from the surface. There's actually rivers and lakes in the ocean. This is because seawater seeps up through the thick layer of salt, Mm -hmm. solving the salt layer, causing it to collapse and forming a depression that I guess you can call an underwater lake. 
There's actually a lake in the Gulf of Mexico that instantly kills anybody that swims in it because it contains toxic amounts of methane and hydrogen sulfide. Flying fish can launch themselves at 35 miles per hour and they can glide for 650 feet, which is almost two football fields. The fastest thing in the ocean is a sailfish because it's almost as fast as a motivated cheetah can run. Most of the oxygen you're breathing right now didn't come from trees. It came from the billions of phytoplankton in the ocean. Ocean facts that you may or may not believe, you're just going to have to trust me. The most common cause of human death in the ocean isn't drowning, it's actually heart attack. The blue whale is the biggest thing ever spawned, but because they have a throat the size of a dinner plate, they eat krill. As filter feeders, they can take out disrespectful amounts of them at once. In fact, they can swallow 1 million calories in one mouthful. Because I am who I am, that is 811 Big Macs. Thanks to echolocation. (laughs) That's how Americans do math. That's right. used to see inside the bodies of other dolphins or whatever humans are underwater with them, which is why scientists believe they have an interest in pregnant women because they can see the fetus inside them. The most poisonous thing in the ocean is the pufferfish, not only because tetrodotoxin is an instant RIP, the amount needed to put you in a coffin could fit on a pinhead. Some have a poison that is 1,200 times more of a death sentence than cyanide. Approximately Mm -hmm. half of U.S. territory is actually underwater. The blue whale has the largest penis on the planet, and the largest Moby Dick ever found was about 16 feet long. But relative to body size, the animal packing the absolute most is the barnacle because their equipment can stretch to eight times their own body length, which is probably why SpongeBob uses it as a curse for animals that look dangerous but yeah. aren't. The whip scorpion looks like it crawled out of a Stephen King wet dream, but they don't bite and they don't produce venom. Even though they look like aliens, they're actually massive pushovers. They're perfectly harmless, and the only damage they can do is to the property value of your house. Piranha got hoed by the media, but they're virtually zero threats to people. They're scavengers, meaning if they're eating something, it's probably already dead. Attacks are extremely rare. Most of the time, you could literally be sitting in the middle of a feeding frenzy and not get touched. I already know exactly what you're going to say, but what happened with Steve Irwin was actually a freak accident because Stingray are afraid of people. They're shy and they'd rather run away. Unless you confuse them for a placement and step on them, they will not attack you first. And even if they do, it's not a death sentence. Stingray venom isn't deadly. It's actually super treatable. What happened to Steve Irwin was maliciously bad luck because not only did he get attacked, he got stung in the worst possible spot, right in the heart. But if he was alive, he'd want you to know they're not a threat. <laughs> the Black Widow has a pretty like, trash. Why are you freaking People don't really like the spiders either, but they rarely bite. A study show that even after getting poked several times, the spider still didn't attack. It takes a lot to get them to attack, and even if they do, the bites are rarely fatal. I promise you they're not that bad. Animals that look dangerous, but surprisingly, aren't. I will never disagree that the Japanese spider crab is one of the most blatant FUs nature ever gave us. What but Neptune's fuck? paralysis demon is actually not aggressive towards humans. With a 12 foot <laughs> and 40 pounds of nightmare fuel, they don't even swim, they just walk around the ocean first. Oh, living my like their own God. Stones. Staying in the ocean of full trap. God damn, bro. Why are you going to call me out like that? Right. <laughs> How dare you tell everyone else I'm so poor? <laughs> Oh my god. Seven feet are longer than most NBA players. But the frill shark is aggressive and they rarely come into contact with people. And when they do, they really just don't care. Perfectly harmless, except to your mental health. Because every time it yawns, a therapist retires early. This spike <laughs> Australia. That that is like an Eldritch abomination in there. Yes. He called it Lucifer's that strikes fleshlight. <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? He called it Lucifer's fleshlight. I missed that. (laughs) Perfectly harmless, except to your mental health. Because every time (laughs) you're on, the therapist retires early. This spiky boy is an intimidating shark in the ocean of nightmare fuel. They don't even swim. They just walk around the ocean floor. Oh, my God. Staying in the ocean, a frilled shark looks like Lucifer's fleshlight. And I said, (laughs) (laughs) yep. How did I miss that? Oh, my God. Lucifer's fleshlight, bro. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's not wrong. Feet are longer than most NBA players. But the frill shark isn't aggressive and they rarely come into contact with people. And when they do, they really just don't care. Perfectly harmless, except to your mental health. Because every time it yawns, a therapist retires early. This spiky boy is an intimidating <laughs> yeah. Australian dinosaur that strikes fear into the hearts of anyone that sees it. I mean, he probably would <gasps> if he wasn't six inches long. They also have <laughs> right. a false head method. You poor baby. Pumps. Next, we have the how the fuck did he get here? Next, we have the spider with the name I refuse to say out loud because fragile masculinity won't let me. Father Lengthy Lens has never been to their bird. Because fragile masculinity won't let me. Oh, oh my. The things are too short to pierce you. Flesh. They're more afraid of you hitting them with a newspaper than you should be of them putting you on one. Animals whose size yeah. society did a poor job of preparing you for. I don't think enough people realize mm-hmm. that capybara can weigh nearly 200 pounds on our largest rodents on Earth. It's a mm-hmm. good thing they're friendly because an aggressive mega gerbil could bring actual hell on Earth. 
They're cool, but you don't want to bring the hood yeah. out of an animal that could take licks from a jaguar and seem unbothered. I mean, just look at this guy. I have always said that sea lions are grizzly bears with a faster swim time. The stellar sea lion can go to 11 feet long, weigh 2,500 pounds, and I don't care whose name is on it, that boat belongs to them now. Wild yep. Wild. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's why you should always keep a shotgun on your boat. <laughs> That's right. You should be like, oh. Like, no, you are not sinking my boat. <laughs> exactly. Like, you are you are a dead sea lion. Oh, gosh. The largest one ever caught was allegedly 12 feet long and over 1,000 pounds, and I assume they put allegedly in there to keep our mental health intact. I really need somebody <laughs> to tell me this is Photoshopped. I still don't it's understand. It's not. Oh. God, it's damn. not Wonderful health intact. I re- fucking shit. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. So, so that thing in the fucking so that thing from Princess Mononoke, the boar god, that's real. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yep. Oh yeah, and that's a thing too. Like, um, in the lower parts of like Alabama, Louisiana, Florida, that um people brought them in they were not an indigenous species and they came in and took over basically but yeah. wild boar are indigenous to the to the americas well the kind that they brought in though and they differentiate them by calling them feral hogs uh-huh they were a um they were a russian uh, okay breed that were brought in for their meat and they ended up getting out into the wild the and wild, basically yeah. taking over the population. And yeah. Were yeah. they, did they, did they just eradicate native hogs or did they interbreed with them? They interbred with them. And so there's all of these, and I mean, crazy, literally like mentally ill hogs everywhere down in that part of america and now that's an interesting question can an animal be mentally ill well you know well we know dogs can hmm. really need somebody to tell me this is photoshopped i still don't understand how we have a nine foot 300 pound dinosaur just running around and everyone accepts this as a part of life this picture <laughs> should actually be terrifying because it's the closest to an actual dinosaur you're going to get that is exactly how nonsense like this happens. That is exactly how nonsense like this happens. Oh, man. Oh. I mean, yeah. except for the fact that they're not cold-blooded. But, yeah, ostriches are fucking... Well, and actually, I disagree. Crocodiles are closer. Mm-hmm. Crocs and alligators are closer to dinosaurs than ostriches. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah, man. That's mm-hmm. Casual Geographic. Very mm-hmm. funny guy. And you learn something every time you watch one of his videos. Go check him out. He deserves a follow. Mm-hmm. Especially if you like animals or nature in any capacity. Check him out. Yeah. Alrighty. This has been Team Adventurous. Welcome to the adventure. <laughs> <laughs>